tabernacle was, was full of curtains. Curtains are a symbol, a sign of, of separation. You, you have a curtain to, to keep certain things out, like the lights or mosquitoes or whatever. Um, and it says that Jesus has gone beyond the curtain as a, as a forum. That Jesus has gone beyond the curtain, beyond the places of separation, and that he has gone there as a forerunner. I, I like, I love this. This gives me so much hope. Especially as I like looked up, like, what exactly is a forerunner? I know different translations would even use different words here. But, uh, but the Greek word there is uh, pedramos. And however your Bible renders pedramos, um, pedramos is defined as one who goes somewhere first so that others can follow. You know, uh, we often think maybe of a forerunner. We think maybe of, um, of John the Baptist. Uh, he was the one who uh, came out into the wilderness first, and he prepared the way for Jesus to come. And he says, there is one coming after me. And so the forerunner comes first, and then one comes after one. And a forerunner implies and necessitates, really, that others are coming after. And the encouragement I'd like to point us to is that Jesus has gone to this place of uh, which we would be separated from. Ethnically, spiritually, because of our sinfulness, we'd be separated. But, but he has gone there as a forerunner so that others can come after him. That's very good news. Because he's entered behind the curtain into the very throne room of God. Hebrews 8 says that. Hebrews 1 says that. That's a main point. <clears throat> that he is in that very holiest of places. That he is in the place where the glory of God is, is shining. And, and as um, uh, Psalm 1611, in your presence is fullness of joy. That's where he is as a forerunner for others to follow. I'd say this has some significance in our lives. Um, in the old system, in, in the old covenant, in the old testament, um, there was a high priest. We've mentioned this before, even this morning and, and the past couple of weeks have been kind of dwelling on this notion of, of a high priest. He entered into uh, a certain room in the temple, or the tabernacle, depending on what era it was in. And that room was called the, the Holy of, of Holies, this very special place where God manifests his presence in a, in a very unique way. Uh, the high priest of Israel would enter into there once a year. Um, and when he entered, when he entered, he didn't go in as a forerunner. Not at all. He entered as a representative. He entered in on behalf of all the people who couldn't. And so he was there, you could say, instead of them. And, and he would sprinkle the blood of sacrifice in the place of them. Saying, I represent these people, and, and I'm making this sacrifice for them. I'm coming in here because they can't. We see here that the point of all this is that Jesus, our great high priest, our greater and better and more noble and more wonderful high priest that he has entered in, not to that holy of holies building place, but he has entered into heaven itself. He has entered into the throne of God. And he enters in not because his people can't, but so his people can and he goes as a forerunner because there are others that are following him. And this is the point of Hebrews. It's uh, the, All that we've seen so far is saying he's great, and he does great things. And all that we'll see kind of in, in you know, chapter 11 and 12 is saying, and keep following him. But he's done great things, and we follow him. He's gone to a great place, and we are following him right now.